And why am I looking over here when the camera's over here, brother? What's going on, guys? Um, changing up the tech setup a little bit today. If you guys know me, I'm not much of a techie. But I figured this, the editing process for these videos would be much easier if we got it all encapsulated right on the old laptop here. So we're doing a screen recording and I got a little uh, video recording in the corner. Now, we're back with another scene breakdown. Now, let me preface this. Apple Cinema, our movie, is out now. I'm going to do a little scene breakdown. But listen, if you get any sort of value from this movie... Any sort of value, you are entertained, you laugh, you cry, you like seeing the process, everything build up, please just share it with a friend. That is the fee, brother. Share this thing with one friend, man. Preferably in the city, but if they're outside the city, that's fine too. We're growing it super organically. I want to be in a position where I can make a much bigger film in Massachusetts at some point. So please, the more successful this film is, the more successful I can make the next one. Anyway. So we're going to do a little scene breakdown, kind of like my little version of genius here. And I got five points and uh, this is the third video in the series. So real quick, there is a, a massive VFX sequence in the movie. It's at around time code 14. I'll pull it up. And this in theaters, in the IMAX, and then I just think in the project is really the aspect of the movie that gave it a Hollywood feel in a mini motion picture. And Jack and I knew this as soon as we wrote it. Destroying Boston, this is what was gonna push the project over from being some short little art film to actually a movie. So this actually took the most trial and error, the most time, the most money, the most shots, the most hands on deck. This was incredibly hard. And um, we didn't know anything about VFX. You know, Jack and I have an editing background, producing background, but we really, we didn't really understand it. So anyway, this portion of the movie, it's, it was integral. Like if we did not execute on this portion, this movie would not be what it is quite simply. Uh, so yeah, that's that. So we're at about 14 minutes and we start here. Now, let me start by saying this. My father works in Quincy. And if you can see my cursor here, he works like kind of in this area over here. So my whole life, I've been driving up I-93 and I've been seeing the tank. And I've always been thinking like, yo, if that thing fucking exploded, we are fucking done for, brother. So that was a concept that I had in my mind for a long time. Like if this tank explodes, it's game over. And everyone in the city knows the national grid tank, man. It's famous. Everyone says like, there's a, there's some sort of like a, there's some sort of outline here that makes one of these paint strikes look like Bob Marley, but who knows? And it wasn't always national grid. There was another, uh, a company, but I'm just going to run the sequence. You guys can watch it and then uh, I'll dissect it. Hope you guys enjoy it. So let's take a shot by shot here. Um, I'm going to talk about five points. So look, this is the shot in post that we called the tank debt shot. And our boys over at ABOT actually just did a little video breakdown on this. But truthfully, where are we at here? So truthfully here, I wanted the comet to hit say frame by frame. And I wanted this to be an electrical charge. I thought that would have been sick. If an electrical charge emanated from this, there were purple elements and gold elements in it. And it stayed trapped up I-93 headed into the city. And then the city sank in from outside. That is what I wanted to do initially. And 
we had a lot of troubles getting this VFX sequence off the ground, and we essentially had zero progress three months or maybe like 60 days out from our premiere. So what we had to do is, given what we had, he was Alex was like, bro, I cannot do electricity, but I am comfortable with smoke assets, and I am, see these are all smoke assets, and I am comfortable with dust assets. And so what he did here is he essentially, these are a million tiny little assets that helped him build up the sequence. But again, initially I wanted to use 93 as this tunnel that the, the charge sent through. We had other drone shots and yeah, that's how I want to do it. I want it to be some like kind of like Venom-esque charge. Now, I really like what Alex did right here. This is a testament to his attention to detail. Look at the interaction right here on, this is UMass Boston. Look at how it kind of hits the land and the land kind of dissipates the charge a little bit. That is a incredible attention to detail. He made everything super hot. And uh, I think the mushroom cloud kind of does look like a pretty realistic mushroom cloud. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it, it makes sense. Alex has a good understanding of physics. So you can see it charge up. You see what I'm saying? Next. Let's move on here. Tidal wave shot. So look, I run all the time on the Charles. I have been for the past year getting the movie done. And I've always thought, how do we put a fucking tidal wave in the fucking Charles River? It's a fucking crazy idea. Everyone's going to think I'm fucking nuts, but that fucking shot would be amazing. And this shot was the hardest to pull off because what I've learned is fluid simulations, 3D simulations are much harder to grasp than 2D simulations because they run through different programs. And it took us a long time to execute this right. It took us a ton of different shots, a ton of different tries. And truthfully, I'm really happy we have this concept in the movie because a tidal wave in the Charles River is fucking sick. But I would want the wave to be more daunting in an ideal world. Just time constraints wise, we couldn't do it. So we fixed, we settled on this. And uh, I think it's probably going to eat me alive for the rest of my life, quite truthfully. But anyway, I'm glad we have the concept in there. But this is all fluid simulations. Two different shots on the Charles. And this is the Mass Ave Bridge. So I always figured that would be so sick if people could run down here and be like, imagine like what would it be like if there was a tidal wave in the Charles? Boom. And and it doesn't physically really make sense. It just sits within the sequence. What does this wave have to do with the flames? It doesn't. It has nothing to do with it. I wish we could have on a if we have a real million dollar budget on the next one, we'll really be able to we would really pick this bridge apart, really destroy some of these cars. Um and then I wish we went a little harder with the destruction here, truthfully. But this was Alex's first attempt at a 3D fluid simulation. And I thought, given his time constraints, he pulled it off. And this was one of the shots that was getting worked on while the movie was in theaters for the online release. Boom. So everyone knows the Mass Ave Bridge. It's the bridge between like MIT and, and Beacon Street. Um, yeah. Now, Millie shot. This is what we called the Millie shot. Now, freeze frame real quick. Here's some of my boys. Here is uh, Kevin Coyle, Brandon Giddles from Boston Empire. There is C's and there is C's cousin Tank who runs a security company. Now, everyone knows Millie's now. I got to be honest, this, this dude's been on an incredible run the past year. And uh, I just always thought it'd be fucking sick to, like, for people in the city, like, yo, famous rapper in the city makes a cameo and gets fucking destroyed. Like, that would be so swag. So when we shot this, I had no clue how we were going to destroy this dude. I honestly had no idea. So truthfully, given the assets we had, some of the 3D assets, I thought we were going to punch the flame in from behind the camera, punch through Millie's, and then go through the backstop and head towards that hotel back there. We shot this at Boston Bowl. You can see Kevin's wearing a Boston Bowl shirt. Um, but Alex was like, dude, I just, I don't think we're going to be able to manipulate that, that area too well. So 
he was like, I can set them on fire. But initially it was supposed to be an electrical charge came through and there was like kind of a pop and these dudes like just turned to dust and disintegrated. But again, we kind of just had to pivot at the last minute given our skills. So, and, and this shot was honestly made for something totally else that we just did not execute on in the film. But again, another concept I'm glad we got into the movie because I think it's pretty sick, but I think we could have done a much better job here. I like how Alex made it hot. I mean, the flames look really real, and you can tell he's got a bunch of different assets here. I like how he made it hot, but we would have, like, ripped a hole in this whole back backstop. You know what I'm saying? Right here. This is an important frame. So this was one of our first shoots, and we called this the Matt Damon shot. I always had this concept, like, all right, we're making a Boston movie. Let's show a little love to previous Boston movies, but, bro, fuck old Boston movies. You know what I'm saying, bro? Let's create a movie that actually the city, it actually encapsulates the identity of the city. You know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted to go for. So this is a parody for sure. Number. How do you like them berries? Boom. So I want you guys to look real quick. This is straight from Goodwill hunting. It's parody. I don't think they can sue me. And look, I love this movie. Who doesn't love Goodwill Hunting? But I was like, yo, it'd be fucking sick. So look at this shit. Okay. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. They look alike, don't they? Like, look. French dude. French dude. Lighting is the same. We got the same neon lights, the same neon reflection, same different note, but <laughs> same thing here. And, uh, yeah, like down to the chain, down to the jacket. It's all the same. Boom. See you, brother. And then we have our final city sinking shot. But we, my initial thought with this shot too is from here, this way is where the electrical charge was going to strike Logan here, was going to destroy Logan, and then... Logan was going to kind of disintegrate this way along with Tyler, who we called the weird French dude. That was just the name of his character. Uh, blasted him this way and he moved across frame and headed to the right side of the frame. But given, again, our time constraints, we got the concept in the movie. How do you like them berries? But it's flames here. See what I'm saying? Alex did a lot with heat here. Blew up some good stuff. And uh, yeah, just given the time constraints, we could not execute on exactly what we wanted. But I'm pumped with how hot he made this. You see how he had like a lot of gold charge here? Anyway, like I think this is what it goes to show is like we had to pivot a lot with this sequence to at least get some of these concepts in in time. And uh, that was my thoughts on this sequence specifically. Now, um, yeah, that's that. Those are some of my thoughts. I just want to make sure I hit on everything. Yeah, cool. Got all that. So, um, yeah, that's some of my thoughts on the sequence. I think it, it's an incredibly integral sequence for the success of the movie thus far because it gives it a real Hollywood feel on nothing. And uh, this is what made it feel like a, a blockbuster. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm glad we pulled it off. I'm glad we got some of those concepts in there that we thought about for a long time. But I think there was definitely some improvement that could have been done. And I'll know going forward, like, all right, big VFX sequence like this, you need way more hands on deck, you need way more time, and you need the equipment. You you need the hardware. You need all the software. And uh, you need people who have experience for sure. So that's what that is, brother. I hope you guys enjoyed this. All love. The movie's in the bio. Give it a watch. Share it with a friend if you like it. And uh, let's get it. All love.